a new documentary shows how Bristol detectives investigating an allegation of female genital mutilation were aware of major flaws in the case months before it collapsed at trial. Cameras spent two years following Detective Chief Inspector Leanne Hook and her team at Avon and Somerset Police as they looked into an accusation made against a taxi driver who was alleged to have caused or allowed his six-year-old daughter to undergo female genital mutilation FGM. The team had hoped their case would result in the first successful prosecution against FGM which has been illegal in the UK since 1985. But the case dramatically fell apart at trial which hinged on medical evidence deemed wholly inconclusive at its highest by Judge Julian Lambert. The 29-year-old Somali taxi driver had been accused of causing or allowing his six-year-old daughter who has lifelong anonymity to undergo FGM and under child cruelty charges he was acquitted on the orders of the judge at Bristol Crown Court. The judge was concerned over inconsistencies in the witness statement an anti-FGM campaigner and decided to throw out the deeply troubling case. Ordering the jury to find a not guilty verdict female genital mutilation has been illegal in the UK since 1985 but there have been no successful prosecutions. A taboo subject and a hidden form of child abuse. It is extremely difficult to detect but can have a devastating impact on the lives of young victims. As young girls are often reluctant to report their FGM experiences or testify against their own parents. Authorities have to rely on third-party witnesses. As many as 2,000 young girls in Bristol are at risk of FGM and most are from African or Asian ethnic backgrounds. The documentary followed the difficulties Pook and her small team had to face. As they tried to gather evidence on the alleged FGM crime, there was a catalog of difficulties that DCI Pook along with colleagues Detective Sergeant Dave Lewis and Detective Constable Dave Avery encountered from medical evidence, witness testimony, the Crown Prosecution Service and the unprecedented nature of the case. Medical evidence The judge explained that equipment used in the initial examination of the six-year-old girl was 15 years old and the photos so blurry he said they were of no value clinically or forensically. DCI Pook had sought to find a second doctor who could verify the account given by the witness Sammy Ulla and corroborate the initial finding of a small cut under the clitoral hood on the girl's clitoris. But four months later when the second medical examination was carried out, Pook was left disheartened to learn that the new expert could not corroborate the initial findings. Pook said, this was a hammer blow to our case. I'm disappointed because I think we won't get justice for this little girl. Her colleague DC Avery reflected at this point. You are thinking right okay we've got something here that we can really develop and maybe take all the way. You have the second medical and to be told they weren't sure there was an injury was a big knockback. However the team didn't give up as the full medical report from the second doctor explained it was possible that she may not have found anything because the alleged injury may have healed. The head in my hands moment was over so I just thought about what else we could do to strengthen the case DCI Pook added. Witness testimony DCI Pook explained at the beginning of the documentary that she had received a tip about an alleged incident of FGM in Bristol. She took control of the investigation after anti-FGM campaigner Sammy Ulla claimed a taxi driver had told him he had allowed his daughter to undergo the barbaric practice. Pook and her team explained how they felt with the witness testimony they had enough to warrant a medical examination of the young girl and to proceed with a criminal investigation into the parents. She said, I am an investigator in a group specializing in this area that spent years being criticized for not ever investigating. Often says successfully, there is a bit of you that is pleased you have got that opportunity. But when the case was taken to trial judge Lambert said that the key witness testimony was inconsistent and although honest, had been influenced by his views as an activist for the charity Integrate. It was later revealed by the Mail on Sunday that Pook and Mr. Ulla were acquaintances with the detective taking his initial statement. Concerns about conflict of interest had been raised with local MP Ian Little Growinger calling it into question. That is unbelievable it's a total conflict of interest. This shows there are major issues at Avon and Somerset Police. The force is losing credibility with the public it's there to serve. The police said that did not involve any conflict of interest. DCI Pook's appointment as a trustee for Integrate was cleared by Avon and Somerset Police, Crown Prosecution Service, CPS.
The investigation went all the way to the top of the Crown Prosecution Service, with DCI Puck and her team awaiting anxiously. As the CPS considered the evidence the police have been collecting for over a year, the discussion centered around those who have asked whether the lower-level Type 4 cuts should be allowed as part of the cultural practice. Whereas others have asked whether it amounts to mutilation, that's a nonsense to me actually, Puck said in the documentary. If we had people running around with razor blades taking chunks out of kids if we had a little white girl here and she had the tip of her finger taken off there would be bloody outrage. And it's just as much of a concern for DC Avery who added, people need to know that these girls are held down by their mother, their grandmother or aunt and cut on their vagina. Even a little nick is painful. Eventually a decision is made to go ahead with the prosecution. Based on the case they have built so far, following the result of trial a spokeswoman for the Crown Prosecution Service described the prosecution against the father for child cruelty in relation to FGM as unprecedented. The CPS considered this case in accordance with the code for Crown prosecutors and decided it met the full code test that there was sufficient evidence to prosecute for an offense of child cruelty and it was in the public interest, she said. The judge at Bristol Crown Court had the opportunity to hear the evidence live and challenged. He then made a decision to stop the case. We respect the judge's decision and will not be appealing. This was an unusual and unprecedented case for the prosecution, where we feel there is sufficient evidence and it is in the public interest to pursue. It is right that we put cases before the court so that a decision can be made by judge or jury. Trial collapse following the collapse of the trial. DCI Puck reflected in the program, largely speaking, this has never happened before. So it was kind of an unknown taking this case to court. The family of the six-year-old child said the two-year investigation had placed intolerable pressure on them and they hoped that those bringing this prosecution would learn important lessons. But DCI Puck defended the investigation. There's various processes that go on to assess criminal cases when they get to a point where we decide where it's decided whether it needs a charging decision. We followed all those processes. There were some evidential difficulties. We never denied that, she added. Do I think we've done the wrong thing of what we've done? No, I don't. Do I underestimate the impact it's had on the family? Absolutely not. Nonetheless, we have a job to do. We have children to protect. And that's what we were doing. The FGM Detectives is available to watch on Channel 4 Player All 4. The union estimates that over 200 million girls and women have experienced FGM which is a life-threatening procedure that involves the partial or total removal of a woman's external genitalia. Girls aged 14 and younger represent 44 million of those who have been cut, most commonly in Gambia, Mauritania and Indonesia. The procedure is mostly carried out on young girls between infancy and age 15. Once girls have been cut, they are deemed ready for marriage and taken out of school, but FGM causes health problems and can be fatal. FGM became illegal in Uganda in 2010 but continues in secret. According to officials and police, it is practiced by both Muslim and Christian communities and by followers of some indigenous religions. People often believe FGM is required by religion, but it is not mentioned in the Quran or Bible. In 2012 the United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution on eliminating FGM. But it remains legal in certain African countries including Mali and Sierra Leone. The practice is illegal in the UK. But according to figures it's thought around 137,000 girls from Britain are taken to countries that still perform the procedure. Tell me where the freaks at.